while on the way, do not begrudge death. Welcome back, friends, to the 21 Principles in the Way of Walking Alone, the Way of Self-Reliance, brought to you by one Miyamoto Musashi. Excellent book, highly recommended. Link in the description where you can go and get that on Amazon. Today's principle, number 17, says, while on the way, do not begrudge death. I think it's 17 or maybe it's 16. <laughs> Either way, what does that mean? While on the way. So the way in this particular case, when you look at um, Buddhist culture, their belief system, the way, you hear Sun Tzu talk about this, the way is the path, right? It's like, biblically, it would be like the path of righteousness, right? That's what they're calling the way because they actually capitalize it when they put it in these books. And you have to forgive me. My nose itches like crazy, like all the time. When I'm talking, my face vibrates and it makes my nose itch. That's why I'm always scratching it. While you're on the path, do not begrudge death. Because first of all, depending on what you believe, <laughs> uh, it's going to happen to pretty much everybody, right? And begrudging it, I, I think one of the things I do, like when I do public speaking, is I use death as a motivator. I have, I've lost friends, I lost my father, and I use those very traumatizing circumstances and situations to encourage people not to drag their feet. Like, allow the fact that, you know, this is going to happen one day to motivate you to get busy now. And I remember being in war, or this was actually before the war. Leading up to the war, there was a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, a lot of confusion as to whether or not we were even going to be in war. And it was somewhat hard to deal with. And I just remember there was a day, I think it was like the day before or a couple days before we actually went into combat. I finally just had this kind of spiritual moment with God where I was praying. I was like, all right, God, here's the deal. I don't want this to happen. I don't believe we should be fighting these people that were getting ready to go in here and attack. But that's not my call. And you've got me here with these men. And I believe you've given me the responsibility. Despite my personal convictions, you've given me the responsibility to help protect these men. And to help us help them accomplish our mission i'm smiling at my my baby's looking at me through the window what's up boy <laughs> handsome little sucker he's trying to open the door he's not strong enough yet so the doctor said he's actually going to be seven feet tall could you imagine me having a seven foot son a guy that's almost a foot taller than me it's terrifying anyway i kind of had this moment where i was like all right god all this stuff's going on it's out of my control uh, I talk about this in depth in our 69 Pillars of Success program. And I just said, all right, God, this is what it's got to be. Just give me the wisdom and the strength to get through it and help these men. I don't want to have to explain to any of their families why they didn't make it home under my command. And fortunately, by God's grace, that, that's what happened. But the interesting thing was when I kind of accepted the reality, like this is what it is, I'm not changing it, and I just turned it over and said, all right, God, it's in your hands. I was no longer begrudging the threat of me being killed in that situation. I just accepted we're going to be in harm's way. I'm going to do everything to survive. And if I don't, you know, uh, <laughs> maybe they'd name a field. As a matter of fact, I joked about that. I said, I don't want anybody doing anything stupid. Those heroes with fields named after them back home got there by dying. <laughs> and I did not want to have a field named after me uh, on any military installation. The point was, once I stopped being afraid of death, and it's such a wonderful place to be when you're no longer afraid of death. It's so freeing and liberating. And I wish it was something, maybe one day I'll coach on it. It's something that's I don't even know how to fully articulate to be able to coach it. It's just something that I went through a process where I was like, okay, I'm no longer afraid of this. And the funny thing is when I stopped being afraid of it, I stopped, I, my risk of encountering it dropped because I started making decisions as if I'm just going to do the next right thing instead of worrying about calculating, is this going to get me killed? You know, obviously not doing stupid things, but there's freedom when you're on the path. When you're on the way, there's freedom and not being afraid or begrudging death and accepting it for what it is. And in your life, maybe it's not physical death. Maybe it's the death of a dream, hopefully not. Or maybe it's the maybe it's the turning of a page to move on to something else. Like I talk about 
uh, my father passing away a couple months ago. And now another mentor of mine who is very similar to my father as a military commander, another mentor of mine just recently passed away. I'm going to be going to his funeral, uh, I think, in two weeks. And I remember when my dad, the last thing my father said to me was at the hospital. And he, he passed at home, thankfully, but a couple days before that he was in the hospital for a bladder infection. And I took my, one of my sons to see him. And I was just hugging him, hanging out with him. We were talking. He wasn't really talking much. You know, as he got closer to passing, cognitively, it was hard for him to even really engage. But enough. He was like, hey, B, what's up? You doing okay? Your kids doing okay? I'm like, yeah, Dad. We're hanging. How are you? And we talked for a little while. And then eventually, he kind of zoned out. So I was like, all right, Dad, we're going to go. I love you. And as I'm known to do, I kind of gripped the back of his neck and I kissed him on his forehead. I said, we love you, Pop. We'll see you in a couple days when you get back home. And as I was walking out the door, Dad very loudly said, hey, B, hey, thanks, man. Thanks, B. And at the time, I was thinking, I'm going to have to thank me, brother. Like, you are my big brother, father, mentor, idol. Like, you don't ever have to thank me for anything. You, any success I have in my life is because of you. So why are you thanking me? But when he passed, my mother had told me some things she, he had said to her very, very close to when he passed. And I was like, oh, man, he was saying goodbye. Because I had talked to him two months before that night. And I just told him, I said, Dad, if you're ready to go home, if you're ready to go home and meet God and go to the final inspection, we're ready to let you go. Like, we'll be sad, but we'll make it. We'll hold the line. We'll continue to push for the legacy of change in the world that you started. I.e. why I'm on YouTube and social media and websites and everything else. And why I coach so much. And we just told him, you know, if you're ready to go, we're ready to let you go. As hard as it may be, whatever suffering comes from it, we'll deal with it. And what he was saying to me that night on the hospital bed was, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for letting me go. And it's still hard for me to talk about it even now without getting choked up. But dad was saying, thank you for letting me not suffer anymore. Because my dad suffered. And he suffered for us. When he had that stroke right before Christmas last year, he, for all intents and purposes, it should have killed him. But he hung in because he knew as a commander, as a leader, as a father, as a husband, he had to make sure that his troops were squared away. Like we have a principle in the military, you do not leave your post until properly relieved. And he was waiting and holding on to make sure that me and my brothers and sisters could properly relieve him and take care of mom. Once he knew that was the case, he bawled out. You know, the Bible says life and death is in, a, is in the power of your tongue, your speech. In other words, you decide when you die. You know, I hear people say, the Lord took somebody home. I disagree with that with all my soul. God ain't taking anybody home. We choose when we get off this planet. It's the way I see it, at least from a spiritual perspective. We choose it. And he chose to go home because he knew he had been properly relieved. He was at peace the next time I saw him. He was at the funeral home and I remember going to see him and just how sharp he looked and how peaceful he looked. It was a far cry from how he looked as he was suffering. You're talking about a man that fought death tooth and nail to stay here to make sure his people were taken care of. That, my friends, is the mark of a true leader. It's why I have so much impatience for the politicians on, on our planet and our country. So much impatience for these self-absorbed, self-interested people that just want your money. It's why I do what I do.
Make no mistake, a lot of this comes from love, but a lot of it comes from anger, too. So, don't be afraid of death. Don't be grudge it. It'll set you free. I love you guys. We're stronger than I. I'll see you tomorrow.